So tell us about this new chip. Great, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, about uh, 10 years ago, we started on this path saying that traditional semiconductor technology was slowing. And so in our unique environment in uh, MIT's research enterprise in Singapore, we could work on these long programs that are uh, really with uh, very interdisciplinary uh, people working on many different aspects of the technology. And we're able to, to basically create um, a technology that allows us to bring in higher performing semiconductors, but still use the same manufacturing technology and manufacturing, you know, ma uh, manufacturing for semiconductors that uh, is used uh, in, uh, today for regular uh, silicon chips. So we're very excited about about this advance, and uh, it really makes a difference in the future applications like 5G um, and also um, integrated optoelectronics, which will appear in illumination and uh, micro displays. All right, Eugene, it's Rich also with Juliet. How does it change the game, if at all? Because there's a lot of talk that the old theory, Moore's law, as it were, that every transistor had double the speed, the speed doubles of every transistor, and the amount of transistors in each chip, sorry, doubles every two years. How does it combat that? Yeah, so that's a, a excellent point, and I and I think that hasn't been uh, spoken a lot about in the in the field, which is that that progress has slowed down. So it, unless you believe that the uh, interconnected world, the way it is today, is going to stay this way, and there's no more advance, then that's the question we started off with. We said, well, how are we going to build new chips that are different, that have higher performance for the key functions that are going to be needed in the future? And so um, the old markets that have driven uh, silicon to where it is today are computing and memory. And uh, that is what Moore's Law, the doubling of transistors, as you say, has uh, really been uh, a key to, to those markets. But as we look towards uh, other applications, you look at your cell phone, you look at your wearables, actually the limiting factor in those devices and the thing that really makes those devices special and, and, and differentiates a product over another one is that uh, they have um, other chips in there that are better at communication, better for displays, and that's basically what our chip does. We are bringing silicon manufacturing technology, which is how computer chips and memory chips are made today, to these other yeah. more exotic materials. And by bringing them in, we can kind of integrate them and uh, get lower cost and higher performance. Is this the right environment to be bringing in a new chip when we're seeing global chip demand fall and we have, of course, not only the US-China trade dispute but Japan and South Korea as well? Well, there's always uh, macroeconomic factors, but I think uh, underneath this all is, you know, Moore's Law was the engine. Actually, if you look at US growth from like 1985 to 2010, it's essentially computers, electronics and software, which at the bottom is all dependent on this um, exponential change in silicon, right? So I think you'll always have shorter term fluctuations, but the, the long term thing is who can create the technologies that are going to be needed in the future and be the new Moore's Law. And so that's what we focused on. So a much longer term, but big win that could bring growth for decades. Well, tell me something here, Eugene. How does 5G change all this? And how does a slowdown adoption of that technology, given the pressure on Huawei and others, and the trade wars Jules is mentioning, factor into perhaps the adoption of it being slower? But the first point and then the second point, please. Yeah, the, well, so 5G is uh, uh, a, a standard, basically. So people are saying we want to be able to communicate in wireless at this higher frequency and have extremely high bandwidth, so of low latency and bring a, a bunch of new services uh, to the marketplace. This is naturally a chicken or the egg problem. So um, the service providers are trying to build infrastructure using Huawei or other manufacturers to show that these services can exist. The, the truth about the semiconductor technology is that underneath this all, um, the semiconductors that we use today in large volume for computing and memory are not really up to the task to do this uh, very high speed communication at low power. 